It's become increasingly more difficult for me to not believe that some games in life are just better when they begin with the letter T. And Italian game designer Daniele Tascini has made that fact even more evident than just about any modern game designer at work today. After a successful string of really remarkable Euro titles over the last eight years, including my number two game of all time, the 2012 classic worker placement game Zolk in the Mayan Calendar, and 2018's worker dice tour de force Teotihuacan, City of Gods, Tashini is now ready to release his next must-have game. This time, it's an intelligently crafted dice drafting game with yet another unique twist. And let's not forget, this game also begins with the letter T. So please sit back, relax, and let me tell you what I like best about Borden Dice's upcoming game, Tekenyu, Obelisk of the Sun. All right, so before I go any further, let me first get this out of the way so that there are no questions about my intentions here today. First, I wasn't paid in any way, shape, or form to review this game. And second, I am unabashedly unashamed of being a giant fan of Tashini's designs. So know that going into this particular review. So for me as a fan of the more hardcore Euro style games, there's just something incredibly satisfying about how so many of his games come together in really unique yet natural ways despite the numerous cogs and wheels and cards and components and rules that make up the sum of all their parts. Each of the games that he designs in some ways do feel somewhat familiar to those games that came before, but in many ways also deliver their own unique palette of new mechanisms that do set them apart. This for me makes each game not only worthy of playing, but also providing me personally as a gamer with that inherent desire to continue to explore the game and find new strategies even after repeated plays. To Kenyu, Obelisk of the Sun is yet another prime example of this specific game design philosophy that Tashini does so particularly well, which is to one, create a game that is familiar to Euro gamers, yet also fresh enough to feel entirely new. Two, to build a game around a really catchy central core mechanism that hooks players in and makes it feel very unique. And three, to make each strategy in the game a viable option for success meaning that Tashini allows game space for players to really create their own path to victory without feeling very shoehorned in to one particular path to win. And like all of those games mentioned that were designed before it, Tekenyu really nails each of these three bullet points remarkably well. Now I will admit, there is a lot going on here when you first look at this game board, and most people are going to feel incredibly intimidated by its presence. But I promise you, it's really not that difficult of a game to grasp if you have at least some familiarity with Euro style games. And hopefully by the end of this review, my attempt at breaking down the game into just its most rudimentary parts will ease your initial worries and give you some small idea of what you can expect in the game. Okay, so Tekenyu's initial learning curve falls somewhat just north of Zolkan and very much in line with his last big release, Teotihuacan. It's not overly difficult to learn, but does fall on the heavier side of gaming. For me, it's just the right weight that's needed to both appease hardcore fans of classic hero style games, while also having the depth that is required to make it really interesting for repeated plays. It is a one to four player Euro style dice drafting game that takes place over 16 rounds, which means you as a player have exactly 16 turns, with games taking approximately two hours to play for a four player game. Although we have most recently just played a three player game prior to this review that clocked in at just 65 short minutes, which felt absolutely amazing. The main mechanism at play here simply revolves around drafting a single color die from around the obelisk space on each player's turn. The dice themselves come in five distinct colors and represent really just one of two things, either the value of a particular resource that the player wishes to gain or the ability to take one of the six god actions depending upon where that die is currently positioned around the obelisk on the board. Each of these six gods provide their own set of unique actions that fuel players' overall strategies, from building statues to the gods, 
to constructing temples and quarries or even increasing their civilization's population and their overall happiness in order to gain access to very specific technology and in a game deed cards. With each of these six Egyptian gods focused on very specific strategies that provide the players with various paths to victory. The twist here is that the dice that are not drafted each round are going to physically change their position on the board. And more importantly, their availability that following round, depending upon the shadow that is cast by the obelisk itself, which is represented by this cardboard ring. This means that your choices on which die to draft and when to do so is integral to your success in this game, as each remaining undrafted die will be readjusted at the round's end and might shift to a different one of the three shaded zones within that ring. Thematically speaking, this signifies the sun's movement around the obelisk throughout the day and the shadows that it creates. These three zones that are created by the obelisk shadow force different colored dye to take on one of three unique properties, being pure, being tainted, or even being forbidden, meaning that those particular dyes cannot be drafted on that round. But like any great Euro game, that's not all that the players are concerned with on their turns. In addition to not only evaluating each drafted die for their possible resource value or their ability to trigger specific god actions, they must also consider their actual pip values for yet another reason. And that's because each pure or tainted die that is drafted is going to be placed on a set of scales on their player board and can tip the balance too far in one of the two directions, which ultimately will lose that player victory points or valuable space in the turn order when the dice are evaluated every few rounds. In a nutshell, that's really the core of what makes the Kenyu unique. But even that is just scratching the surface of what this game has to offer. There are a multitude of decision points each and every turn that players must carefully weigh in order to enact any one specific strategy. For example, do I draft a die to convert it to the resources that I need so that I can build a statue on the following turn? Or do I invest in the quarry so that my ability to collect those same resources in the future becomes more powerful? Or maybe I draft an entirely different die to raise my population so that I have access to the deed cards that will earn me the in-game victory points for investing in that same quarry that I wish to build right now. And let's not forget that I also need to consider drafting the right value die in order to balance my scale so that I don't lose points or my ability to be higher in the turn order so that I can draft my dice before other players on future rounds so that I can even attempt to do all those things that I just mentioned. All of these things are fascinating to me and are what continue to draw me into these style of games and Tekenyu is no exception to that rule. And despite having an initial learning curve, the game does more than enough to make that investment of time worthwhile, especially if you already enjoy Tashini's past designs. And speaking of his previous games, you probably want to know where I might rate this one in comparison to both Zolkin and Teotihuacan, the two games of his that are most closely linked thematically. And my answer is this, truly the jury's still out. All three of these games are very different in their gameplay, their presentation, and their core mechanisms to all have their own place in my personal collection, each doing things differently enough to stand on their own. However, if I were pressed to answer that question right now, I would say this. After five plays now, Tekenyu currently falls somewhere in between Zolkin and Teotihuacan for two very distinct reasons. First, the feedback loop in Tekenyu is far more pronounced than that of Teotihuacan, meaning that the actions that you take are going to have more of an immediate impact on your game. So for example, where Teotihuacan might take two to three turns to receive the payout for all those actions leading up to it, Tekenyu mostly rewards the players with instant gratification for most anything that you do in the game. And that's really satisfying for me as a Euro-style gamer. And second, probably even more important is the fact that you just can't accomplish everything that you want to do in Tekenyu. You have to pick your path and try to follow it to its end. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't deviate from your specific plans in the game because there are a multitude of options that might lead you down very different paths to earning you victory points. And that's really fine to do here. But this isn't a game that's going to allow you to enact every single strategic option that's available. And that's because all those 16 turns at first might seem like a lot, 
but by the game's end, you'll definitely wish that you had just one or two more rounds to accomplish those goals that you just didn't focus heavily enough on in the beginning or in the first place. All of these things combined make this yet another standout title from one of the most respected game designers in the industry. Tashini continues to create smart, interesting mechanisms that force players to consider each of their actions very, very carefully. And that's exactly what I love about his style of games. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you guys next time. Hey everyone, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider dinging the old bell below. That is going to help notify you of new videos that are uploaded to our channel. And as always, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and please consider watching all of our videos, one of which you can see right here to my left.